Good morning. I'm Father Rob Sloker, priest in partnership with the Church of the Ascension Episcopal Church in Mount Sterling, Kentucky. And we're here in the Slocum living room to celebrate the third Sunday of Advent. I want to give thanks to Joe Botts for preparing our bulletin for use today. Uh, my wife, Victoria, will be helping with the liturgy, and we will begin. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory, Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Psalm 126, and we'll say it by half verse, breaking at the asterisks. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream, then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. And we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord. Like the watercourses of the Negev, those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance on our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. 
My whole being shall exalt in my Lord. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 9. Surely it is God who saves me. I, I will trust, trust in him and not be afraid. For the, the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, bring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from First Thessalonians. Rejoice always, praise without, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 15. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For, For he has, has looked, looked with favor on his lowly servant. servant. From, From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all who might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. And as the prophet Isaiah said, Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. 
This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He, he has, has come, come to his people, people and set them, them free. free. He, he has raised, raised up for us a mighty Savior, Savior born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. John the Baptist says, I am not the Christ. In a way, there's the whole story right there for John the Baptist. He goes out into the wilderness and the multitudes go out to him and he gives him a water baptism in the river Jordan for repentance. This is not the baptism we do at the font in our church or in other places and times in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It's not a Trinitarian baptism, but it is an outward sign of their repentance and implicitly their forgiveness. But John, when asked, the people go out to ask him, well, who are you? What are you about? Of course, they've been sent by the religious authorities of that day to ask those questions of John. But John says, well, no, he is not the Christ. He is not the prophet. He is not the Messiah, the chosen one. But he is, if you will, the herald, the one crying out of the wilderness. As the prophet Isaiah says when he foretells the coming of the Messiah, make straight his path. And so that's John's role. He is the herald. He is the one who points to Jesus. In a way, he is the one who calls us to attention, to be aware that Jesus is coming into our world, coming into our midst. That is to say, the Christ, the Messiah, is at hand. But John is really clear about who he is and who he is not. He is not the Christ. And if you will, that's step one of the Christian life. In other words, I am not the Christ, nor are you. <laughs> I am not my own Savior, and I can't. And you are not your own Savior, and you can't. We need a Savior beyond ourselves. We need the Christ to come into our life. And without that Something really important is missing. There's a hole, if you will, that needs to be filled. And somehow people try to fill it with all kinds of things that won't work, that won't last, that won't endure. We look for, we yearn for, we anticipate, we are expectant for the coming of the Christ. And that's the time that John the Baptist lives in. And in a way, it's continuing to be the time for each and every one of us that we also, in our own ways, look for the coming of the Christ to us. Make his path straight. Welcome him. Let him in. And that's the point, that faith is something that we choose, something that we share. And out of this relationship, we come to be at one with the Christ. When we admit that we're not the Christ, we can share Christ's life. We will be able to live into his life, death, resurrection experience. But as long as we want to be our own Christ, we want to be in charge. We want to be in charge of everything. We want to call our shots. I remember... Uh, when I was in law school, one of my classmates saying, I want to call my own shots. I want to make my own way. 
Good luck with that. We don't call our own shots and make our own way. We do our best. We offer our initiative. We offer our gifts. We offer our time and energy. But ultimately, God is beyond us and outcomes are beyond us. We offer what we have. and We offer our best. We can do our best. We can cooperate. We can collaborate. We can joyfully receive God coming to us. We can let our hearts be open, our hearts, our lives, uh, being that we share in the world can be made open for Christ, make his path straight, welcome the Christ when he comes, not just in Advent, but all through our lives. And I promise you, Christ will show up in times of hardship, in times of joy, in times alone, in times with loved ones and community and family and friends. And in all those times, Christ will show up, show up for us to, to heal, to save, to forgive, to rejoice with us, to send us out, to commission us, to share his glory in the world, to share his light in a place that can be pretty dark. But we need to be open to Advent, to that time of waiting. People these days don't want to wait so much. They want it now. We want instant gratification. We want sound bite presentations. But we can do better than that. But to do better than that, that we need to accept God's timetable and not always insist on our own. So to learn to wait, to learn to be still, to learn to be open in our hearts and to refresh that, to renew it. That's what we're about in this season of Advent. These four weeks, we, we put on the blue, and it's the one time of the year that we emphasize so much this expectancy of the Christian life, the yearning, the admitting both the present incompletion and the seeking for the completion in God that is available to all of us, that is freely offered to all of us. But to know it, to know it in its full, it's not going to just hit us over the head like a hammer. We welcome it. We engage it. We collaborate with it. We open our hearts. We admit that we're not the Christ, but we know the one who is. And the Christ is coming. Let's say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. And because we are 
sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you, Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with us as we consider the renewal and mission of our church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us by your Holy Spirit to perceive what is right, and grant us both the courage to pursue it, and the grace to accomplish it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our intercessions are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I ask your prayers for those who have gone before us. Chuck Bartels, who, who passed away on Thursday, December 3rd, for Paul Weckeser, Paulina Toms, Marjorie Costin, Mary Mitchell, and Adelaide Titus. We celebrate the birthdays of Marla Wright, Judy Ratliff, and Daniel Rogers. We have special prayers of well-being and strength for Keith M., who will go into surgery this week, Yancey H, Jim J, Beth S, Norm S, Mabel M, Susanna W, Cynthia W, Julia W, April E, Betty B, Lisa A, Virginia W, and Beverly K, as well as all those who suffer. We pray for emotional healing and strength for Patrick P and Lori G. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for Walker S, clean scan for Jack and Vicki's recoveries from COVID-19. We also remember those in armed services, both at home and abroad, and all who have suffered or continue to suffer as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, including Melanie D. and Randy D., um, who's in uh, pulmonary ICU. I ask your prayers for those on our Dawson intercessory prayer list Emmanuel Episcopal Church, Winchester, the Reverend Jim Trimble, priest in charge. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Let's say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, 
by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let me invite you to join us for Christian Education at 1030 and Coffee Hour at about 11, both live on Zoom. Also, to join us for our annual meeting today at 1, also live on Zoom.